All right, so you guys didn't do very well on this uh, Ed Puzzle assignment about types of matter. So I'm going to go through it with you and try to explain things as we go. Hopefully this will improve your understanding uh, as a result of having watched this. So let's give it a try. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. It can have many forms. We will commonly divide matter into three phases, solid, liquid, and gas. We are probably familiar with these terms, but let's define them anyway. All right, so be sure you, you had some loose leaf and a pen as we did this, and you have uh, written down some things as you went. So he's going to describe the solid state, he's going to describe the liquid state and the gas state. Be sure you've got a good description, possibly even with pictures like you see here on the slide. So let's continue. A solid has fixed shape and volume. The particles are touching and do not move. All right, so notice in the picture here, he just said a solid has a fixed shape. So you can see in the photograph that there are little crystals there. Those crystals have a definite shape. That, therefore, those are solid, right? They're not spilling all over a counter. They're not spreading throughout the room. Each of those crystals you could pick up and hold in your hand, move it around. They have fixed shape. If you zoomed in on the crystals, you would see what you see up above on the, above the word solid. You would see a bunch of particles depending on what the crystal was made of. Those could be atoms. They might also be molecules. And those particles would be arranged in a very regular repeating pattern like you see in the solid, in the solid diagram. They're touching and the particles are not moving around. So they're, they're fixed in one location within the solid state. A liquid has fixed volume but no fixed shape. It will mold to its container. The particles are still touching, but they do move fluidly. All right, so now we're looking at the liquid state. The liquid, again, if we zoom in on it, the liquid does not have a fixed, vol a fixed shape, right? Its shape is the shape of whatever container you put it in. If you pour some water into a glass, the, wa the wa liquid water just takes the shape of the glass that it's in. If you zoomed in on the particles of liquid, again, depending on what the liquid was, those particles might be atoms, they might also be molecules. We'll explain in a moment if you're unclear on the difference. But notice that the particles are still touching each other. They're very close together, just like in the solid state. But the difference is they're no longer fixed in one location. They don't, they don't take up a what's called a crystal structure like you saw in the solid state. Now they're moving around. They're pushing past each other. You might think of the solid state as being like all the students sitting in their desks and their chairs. They're not moving around and they're, they're sitting in very nice rows. They're, they're even shoulder to shoulder touching each other. In the liquid state, it would be more like people in the hallway during class time. It's packed, you're still bumping into people, there's very little space, if any, in between you, but you're all pushing past, you're moving past each other. That's what the liquid state would be like. So let's continue. A gas has no fixed volume or fixed shape. It will completely fill its container. The particles are far apart, moving freely, and seldom touch. So again, the, the gas state is made up of particles, just like the solid and liquid states. Those particles could be atoms, they could be molecules, depending on the gas. But now those particles are no longer stuck together. They're, they're no longer touching each other. They're flying around and there's lots of big space in between them. They take the, the, the volume of their container. The liquid is sitting at the bottom of its container, so is the solid. The liquid and the solid, they have a fixed volume. The gas is filling the entire container. If you opened the container, the, the gas particles would come out and they'd fill the room. So the gas does not have a definite volume. The particles are constantly moving around in the gas phase and they're no longer really touching each other unless they once in a while collide with each other. All right, so now we have a question to a answer here. Liquid particles touch each other um, but are constantly moving. Is this true or is this false? What do you think? 
Well, based on what we just said, the particles in a liquid state, like a solid state, they are definitely touching each other, but they're moving past each other. There, there is motion of the particles. It's like being in that crowded hallway. You're bumping into each other shoulder to shoulder, so you're touching, but you're moving past each other as you go to your next class. So this is a true statement, all right? So let's, there we go, we got that right. <laughs> so let's continue. Matter will frequently change forms, and describing these changes is at the heart of chemistry. A physical change is one in which the chemical composition of the substance is unchanged. When ice so we talked about physical and chemical change back in our first unit. What he just described was that a physical change, there's no change in the chemical composition of the, sub, of the material. In other words, if you began with water, you still have water after a physical change. All right, so physical change, there are no new chemicals formed, no new, no bonds are broken, no new bonds are created. The chemical structure is unchanged in a physical change. When ice melts, water is going from the solid phase to the liquid phase. The way the water molecules are arranged changes, but they are still water molecules. A chemical change is one in which the chemical composition of the substance does change. Chemical bonds between atoms must break and form to generate completely new substances. All right, so in a chemical change in our first unit, we said new substances are created. He gave you a bit more detail here. He said that bonds between particles, between the atoms, are breaking and new bonds are forming, and that's what creates new materials in a chemical change. Here, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Okay, now let's, let's pause here. What are we seeing in this picture? Number one, we see three particles, right? So the first particle has two circles of H stuck together. That's one particle. Underneath it has another particle with two circles of H stuck together. And a third particle has two circles, the red circles, with oxygen O's stuck together. So there's three particles here. Now look at just one of those particles. Look at the HH, the two circles with H. Each one of those circles would represent an atom. All right, so here we have two atoms, that's what that's trying to say, of hydrogen, and they're stuck together to make one larger particle. That larger particle, which is now made of two atoms stuck together, we call that a molecule. So a molecule, or an atom, those are two different kinds of particles. In this way of depicting it, the atom would be a single circle, the H with a circle around it. That's an atom. But when two or more of those circles are stuck together, when two or more atoms are bonded together, that particle is referred to as a molecule. Right? So molecules and atoms are both particles. In this picture, we now see three molecules, two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. Within each of those molecules, there are two atoms. Each molecule of hydrogen has two atoms of hydrogen. Each molecule of oxygen has two atoms of oxygen. Now let's talk about another term here, since we're looking at this slide. There are also here two elements. Hydrogen is on the periodic table. Hydrogen is an element. When we have two, part, two hydrogen atoms stuck together like this, that molecule of hydrogen is still part of the element hydrogen, right? A single atom of hydrogen by itself would be part of an element hydrogen. So if the atoms, if there's only one kind of atom present, if we have just two H's stuck together, or maybe there's three H's stuck together, or maybe there's only one H by itself, a single atom, that's, that represents an element because there's only one type of atom, hydrogen. Then we see another circle, two circles in red, the two oxygen atoms stuck together to make a molecule of oxygen. That would be the element oxygen. Right? It's the element oxygen because there's only one kind of atom in that particle, oxygen atoms. 
Now in this, what we're going to see here is a chemical reaction. Two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, are going to combine and they're going to create a compound. They're going to create water. So let's continue. Combine to form water. Notice that hydrogen and oxygen used to be connected to themselves and are now connected to each other. New All right, so notice in this new picture, how many particles do you see? The correct answer is two. The two particles both have two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. So there's one of those particles on the left and there's a second one of those particles on the right. Are those particles molecules or are they atoms? Well, because each of those particles has three atoms, they have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, they're not atoms. These are molecules. So the two H circles bonded to the one O circle, that entire thing would be a molecule of water. So here we have two molecules of water, and each of those molecules is composed of two atoms of hydrogen connected to one atom of oxygen. Now, when you look at one of those molecules of water, are you looking at an element or are you looking at a compound? Because there's two different elements present in each particle, since water has two hydrogens, so there's hydrogen, bonded to one oxygen, so there's also oxygen, that molecule has two different elements, that's a compound, all right? If, it, if all three particles had been the same, if there were three oxygens connected to each other, then that molecule would have still represented an element. If there's only one kind of atom there, if they're all oxygens, that would be an element. But if you see more than one kind of atom in that particle, so here we see two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, then we know we're now looking at a compound, and this compound is made of molecules of water. I hope that helps. I'm trying to overemphasize this explanation. Bonds, new substance, chemistry has occurred. So, things like a substance changing from one phase to another are always physical changes. But if we make an entirely new substance with new chemical bonds, that's a chemical change. A pure substance is one that can't be separated into other materials by any physical process. All right, so pure substances. Did you write down in your notes, they cannot be separated by physical processes. Now, physical processes would be things that you use during your sludge tests. So for example, filtering or perhaps some decanting or perhaps fractional distillation, chromatography. A pure substance could not be separated using any of those kind of techniques, all right? Now, a pure substance, if you were to look at it from a, from a particulate level, if you're looking at the particles that make it up, all of the particles would look the same. So if you saw all water molecules in, in, a, in a container, then th that's a pure substance. If you see all hydrogen atoms, that's it, just hydrogen atoms, a bunch of single spheres, that's a pure substance. So when you have only one kind of particle present, you have a pure substance. And that pure substance cannot be separated from, from other particles of that substance using any kind of physical process. So let's continue. Water, whether you boil or freeze it, will still be water. It's a type of molecule, which is just multiple connected atoms. An element... All right, so he described a molecule as multiple connected atoms, which is pretty much what I said earlier. Two or more atoms bonded to each other makes a particle, which we call a molecule. An element can't be broken down into smaller parts by physical or chemical means. All right, so elements cannot be broken into simpler substances by chemical or physical means. So if you have an element hydrogen, you can't get anything simpler. It's still going to be hydrogen, okay? 
on a periodic table, there are 118, we looked at this in class, elements that are known. Hydrogen is the simplest, and they go all the way down to element 118. Of those elements, the first 92 of them, from hydrogen up to uranium, are all of the elements that are found naturally in the universe around us. The elements after number 92, so the elements after uranium on the periodic table, those elements were created. They were artificially created by physicists in the lab. They don't, they're not found naturally in the universe around us. We're going to talk more about those in our last unit of the course later on. For example, water is not an element, it's a compound, because it is made of two or more elements. In this All right, so you can see compounds are made of two or more elements. When you look at the, the structure of the water molecule, you can see it has two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen, so it's got two elements in there. When you look at its chemical formula, H2O, you can see it's got two elements that make up this compound. Right? So although there are only 92 elements, that's, that's a lot, but still only 92 elements in the world, in the, in the universe, everything around you, the, the huge, almost infinite amount of different substances around us in the universe, those are almost all compounds. They're made up of these elements that are bonded together in a bunch of different ways. So while there's hydrogen on the periodic table and there's oxygen on the periodic table, you can take two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. You could make the compound water. You could also take two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. So now H2O2. And if you put those four atoms together, you get a different compound. You get something called hydrogen peroxide. Right? So by combining elements in almost infinite different ways, you get a huge assortment of compounds, which are the things that we encounter usually around us day to day. In this case, oxygen and hydrogen. By a chemical process, we can divide water into these two elements, but that's as far as we can go with chemistry. All right, so we're actually going to be doing that experiment. You're going to, well, you'll be watching that experiment in a video that comes next. We're going to take water and we're going to do what's called electrolysis. We're going to zap it with electricity and the water, the compound water, will be broken apart into its elements. We're going to collect oxygen gas and hydrogen gas by decomposing the water molecules. So let's select the true statements below. Okay? You, you decide if each of these statements are true or false. So the first statement, elements can be broken down into simpler substances. Is that true or is that false? Well, elements are the simplest substances, so no, they can't be broken down. That's false. Compounds are pure substances. That's true. If you looked at water, you'd see a whole bunch of water molecules and every water molecule would look just like every other water molecule. Because every particle looks the same, two H is bonded to an O, all the particles are the same, it's a pure substance. So if you are drinking a glass of water, you're drinking a pure sub substance, assuming it's pure water. So that's true. Are elements pure substances? Well, right here in the picture, we see oxygen and we see hydrogen. If that, was to, if that was together, if you imagine that was all in one container, it would not be a pure substance because there's two different kinds of particles present, hydrogen and oxygen molecules. But if you had just hydrogen molecules in a container or just oxygen molecules in a container, then you would have a pure substance because all the particles are the same. So elements, yes, those are pure substances. Compounds are composed of two or more elements. Well, that's the definition of a compound, so yes, that's definitely true. Physical processes can break compounds into elements. Definitely not. If you boil water, you're not going to break it into hydrogen and oxygen gases, right? If you filter water, you're not going to separate hydrogen and oxygen gases. So physical processes are not able to break compounds down. 
in the experiment we're going to do, we're going to zap the water with electricity. We're going to do a chemical change, not a physical change. So let's, let's see if we've got this right. I'm, I'm doing this on two different devices here. All right, so let me submit my answers on both. Whoops, <laughs> what did I get wrong? Oh, as I said it, I checked off the wrong thing and you didn't stop me. <laughs> Okay, that last one, we said physical processes are not able to break them down, so I should not have checked that, right? That was a false statement. Thanks, you guys, for preventing me from making a mistake here. These are now molecules right. of a given element. A mixture. So particles, we've talked about this, of O2 and H2, those are molecules. Each of those molecules, those particles, has two atoms, two atoms of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. Water is also made up of molecules, and each molecule, each particle of water has three atoms, two atoms of hydrogen connected to one atom of oxygen. I hope this is becoming A mixture for is you. made of two or more pure substances, and these can be separated by physical processes. So you guys, right now in your sludge tests, you have a mixture in front of you. You have a mixture with perhaps you have water, perhaps you have methanol, perhaps you have sand and salt. You have a bunch of different things mixed together. So if you could look at the particles, you'd see a whole bunch of different kinds of particles. You might see a molecule of water, right next to it a molecule of methanol. Right next to it, maybe there'd be a molecule of sugar. You'd see all these different molecules or perhaps some atoms. And because you're seeing different particles, you have a mixture of substances. Mixtures can be separated by physical processes. So that's what you're doing. You're separating these components from your mixture by distillation, by filtering, by decanting. If you boil salt water, the water will evaporate and the salt won't, so the substances will have separated. A mixture can be homogeneous, meaning all the substances are distributed evenly and every section looks the same, like sugar and water. So homogeneous, the particles, the substances are distributed evenly, equally, throughout. Wasn't that the definition of, our, of, of solution? Didn't we define a solution? as a, whoops, I'm getting ahead of myself. A solution is a homogeneous mixture, isn't it? A solution has solute and solvent spread out equally throughout. That's a homogeneous mixture. Or they can be heterogeneous, meaning they are not distributed evenly, and zooming in on different sections would look differently, like oil. Okay, so heterogeneous, they are not equally spread out everywhere. So in this picture, you can see oil above water. So if you look at one part, you're going to see lots of oil. You look at another part, you see lots of water. Right in the middle where they meet, you might see particles of both. So because it looks different at different places, it's heterogeneous, not homogeneous. Like oil and water. All right, so I just mentioned this a minute ago. A homogeneous mixture is our definition of solution, isn't it? You have a homogeneous mixture of the solute in a, and a solvent, and they're stirred up, they're shaken up, so they're same everywhere. That's what a solution is. Hey, we got that right. So we've got pure substances, which can be elements, made of only one. All right, so look carefully at this chart, and I hope you copied it down. All of matter, well, you can have pure substances or you can have mixtures of substances. If you have pure substances, it'll either be elements where only one kind of particle is present. There's only atoms or there's only molecules, and in the molecule, the particles are all the same. So if you have only one kind of particle, two oxygen atoms bonded together, or single atoms of aluminum, then you have, an you have an element. 
In a compound, you'd have molecules. You can't have atoms if it's a, if it's a compound. And the molecules would all be the same. That's why it's a pure substance. And each molecule would contain atoms from different elements. So if it were uh, methanol, there would be carbon atoms, there would be hydrogen atoms, there'd be oxygen atoms, and they'd all be bonded together to make methanol molecules. If every molecule looks the same, it's a pure substance. Mixtures, the particles are different. So you'll have different kinds of particles if, if you look closely. If the particles are all spread out evenly, it's a homogeneous mixture. If the particles are not spread out equally and evenly, it's a heterogeneous mixture. Only one type of atom or compounds, which are made of different types of atoms, but are still just one type of molecule. Or we can have mixtures, which are made of multiple types of molecules and are arranged in either homogeneous or heterogeneous fashion. Let's check. All right, so let's take a look at box A here. Which statements are true about that first box? Well, first of all, is it a mixture of two compounds? Is that true? Well, to be a compound, the particles, let's look closely at the particles, they would have to have two different elements, two or more elements stuck together. When I look at the particles in the first box, those are all molecules, because each, each of them has two atoms stuck together. But when I look at the particles, when I look at the molecules, the atoms that are stuck together, they're the same. So there's two blue atoms stuck together, or there's two red atoms stuck together. That means each of those molecules has only one kind of element present. You might think of this as hydrogen molecules, H2, and maybe oxygen molecules, O2, because each particle is made up of two identical atoms. That was, that's not a compound. To be a compound, the particles would have to be composed of more than one kind of element. So you'd have to see like a red circle stuck to a blue circle. Then you'd have a compound. So that cannot be a mixture of two compounds. Is it a mixture of two elements? Well, it's definitely a mixture. The part is two different kinds of particles. So it's a mixture. It's not a pure substance. And because the particles have only one kind of atom in them, two blue atoms and two red atoms, that means they're the same element in each particle. So yes, those are a mixture of two elements. That's true. Um, all of the particles, so it can't be a mixture of an element and a compound. That doesn't make sense. Are the particles all atoms? No, the particles all have two atoms stuck together. So the particles there are all molecules. Now, each of the molecules is made up of atoms, but the particles that we see flying around in the container have two atoms each stuck together. All right, so I hope that makes sense. They're made of molecules. Let's continue. Hey, we got it right. Let's check comprehension. So which box? boxes, so we're going to select all that apply, contain a pure substance. To be a pure substance, substance, all of the particles in the box must look the same. So in the first box, each of those particles is a molecule. There's two atoms in each particle, so those are molecules. The atoms are different. There's a red and a white in every one of those particles. So those are molecules of compounds. There's two different kinds of elements in each particle. But every one of the particles has a red and a white stuck together. So the particles are all the same. So box A definitely is a pure substance. In fact, it's a pure compound, and it's made of molecules. In box B, the particles, again, they all look the same. There's two red atoms stuck with two white atoms. They're all the same. Because they're all the same, it must be a pure substance. Now, that pure substance is made of molecules. Each molecule has four particles, two reds and two whites. So those are compounds also. This is a compound made up of molecules. 
Box C, is that a pure substance? Box C, there's two different kinds of particles in there. There's particles that have two red circles and particles that have two white circles. So this is not a pure substance. This is a mixture. Now, each of the particles that we see has two atoms. So then these are all molecules in box C. There's two oxygen, two red atoms and two white atoms. So these are, this is two different kinds of elements. Right? And each of those elements is made of molecules. But because there's two different kinds of particles present, this has to be a mixture. The correct description for box C would have been a mixture of two different elements. And each of the elements is made up of molecules. In box D, is that a pure substance? Well, part, box D, I see two different kinds of particles. I see what looks like water molecules, two hydrogen atoms, that would be the white guys, and an oxygen atom, that would be the red guy. So you can think of that as being water molecules. It's a compound. But then there's also atoms of oxygen, the little red circles that are by themselves. So that would be an element. So this is a mixture of a compound, the water, and an element. And this element, the oxygen, is not its normal form. It's not O2. Here it's oxygen atoms, so it would just be O. That's unusual. So that would be not a pure substance. So only A and B are pure substances here. Let's see how we did. Hey, we got it right. All right, so physical or chemical change dew condensing, when water vapor condenses, that's just a physical change. Pipes rusting, it's the metal reacting with oxygen gas to make something new. Chopping firewood, you still have firewood, right? And the alcohol fermenting, you might not have known that, but when alcohol ferments, things, that's actually a bad way to say it, when sugars ferment, you create alcohol, you create a new substance. So don't worry too much if you didn't fully understand those, those things on your slide. But look at the multiple choice question. What's the best description here for box C? So looking at the third box there, is it a pure substance or is it a mixture? Well, all the particles are the same, a blue and a red circle stuck together. So this is not a mixture, it's a pure substance, right? So is it a compound with made up of molecules, or is it a compound where the particles are atoms? It's definitely a compound because there's a red and a blue in every case. That means there's two elements in every case. And because each particle has two spheres stuck together, each of these particles would be a molecule. So this is a compound made of molecules. Now you might say, but the molecules are made of atoms. That's true, but those individual atoms would not represent the compound. So for example, water, H2O, is made of molecules of water. And each of the molecules has two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. But there are no atoms of water. There's atoms of hydrogen, atoms of oxygen, and they combine to make molecules of water. So that's what we see in that third picture. Molecules made of two atoms each, two different elements, therefore it's a compound made of molecules. And because every particle is the same, it's a pure substance. All right, so I hope that makes sense. We got it right. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for my channel. All right, one of the alcohols we used was methanol. Which statement would be true about methanol? So if I gave you a bottle of methanol, would it be a pure substance? Well, it's got methanol. There's nothing else. It's just methanol. So yes, it must be a pure substance. Now, if you were to zoom in, you would see that the methanol is made up of Particles, the particles are, are, have one atom of carbon, there's four atoms of hydrogen, and there's one atom of oxygen, looking at the formula up above. So because there's a bunch of different atoms stuck together, 
It's made up of molecules. So down below, the methanol is made up of molecules. Each of those molecules has, let's see, three, four, five, six atoms, one carbon atom, four hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. Is methanol a, a compound or is it an element? Well, it's got three different elements combined. It's got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So it's not an element. It must be a compound. So I gave you a bottle of methanol. It's pure. There's only one kind of particle there, methanol particles. Those particles have a bunch of atoms stuck together, so they are molecules. And because there's more than one kind of element, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, it's a compound. Did we get that right? Yes, we did. Let's continue. Channel for more tutorials, and as always, feel free to email me, Professor Davis. And our last question: Fractional distillation would be able to separate elements that make up compounds. Well, to separate the elements that make up a compound, you would need to be breaking the chemical bonds in that compound, and fractional distillation is a physical process. So, no, you could not do that by fractional distillation. So is it able to separate the elements? That's false, right? If you do fractional distillation you, of, of just water, if you just do just water, you're not going to get hydrogen and oxygen coming out of your hose. You're going to get water vapor coming out of the hose. So fractional distillation can separate the components in a mixture, but they cannot separate the elements within a compound. All right, so I hope that helped, all right, understand your mistakes. I hope you have a better understanding of elements and compounds, a better understanding of the particles that make them up, molecules and atoms. If there's still something not clear, respond to this with a specific question and I will try to answer it on Google Classroom. All right, I hope that helps. Enjoy.